several years ago, I was working on a certain partial differential equation. For those of you that don't know, a partial differential equation is an equation involving some unknown function and its derivatives. In particular, its partial derivatives. And to solve the equation, you actually have to find the function. And I was stuck. I was stuck for like a week. And the professor for my class was not available. So I went to my advanced calculus professor's office. I knocked on his door and I could see through the glass in the door. After I knocked, I noticed that he had his head down and he was asleep. And I felt bad because I woke this guy up. So he got up, let me in. And I, I said, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bug you. You know, I didn't want to wake the guy up. And he said, no, no, it's fine. What is it? And I showed him the partial differential equation I was working on. And I asked him if he could help me. He said he had no idea. No idea how to do it. And I was blown away. You know, here is this professor who has a PhD. He's had his PhD since the 70s. He's a full professor. He's teaching a real analysis class. And he can't solve a partial differential equation. And that stayed with me forever. And it wasn't until I finished and I got my degrees that I realized that it's normal. It happens to everybody. Something horrible happens to everybody when they leave, you know, an academic institution where they learn math. They forget. We all forget. So in this video, I want to help you not forget. I'm going to talk about how you can remember everything or how you can at least try to regain what you lost because I know that a lot of people that watch these videos aren't necessarily in college anymore. And if you are in college, this is going to help you a lot. The problem with college, the problem with classes in general is that there's time. You know, if, if you're in a college level, let's say discrete math class, which is the class that computer science majors take. It's a wonderful class because you do sets, logic, number theory, graph theory, some counting. It's a really, really cool class where you do all kinds of different types of math. It's also a notoriously difficult class that is often considered a weed out class for computer science majors. The big issue with that class, like any other class, is time. You have homework due dates, you have tests, and the semester ends, so everything is rushed. The good news is, when the class is over, when you finally have time to go back and review, you can do that. And it works. If you think about this teacher who couldn't solve the partial differential equation, I guarantee you he was a master at every class he was teaching because he actually had to prepare for the class. He actually had to get up there and get on the board and explain the problems to the students. And most importantly, he was probably a little bit afraid. He was scared that someone would ask him a question that he wouldn't know the answer to. That's the biggest fear for most teachers. You know, if you're going to teach a class and you're going to go in there and you're going to talk about something, you want to make sure that you can answer everyone's questions. That is like the number one thing. You need to be ready to teach. And so I guarantee you he knew what he was talking about when it came to, you know, teaching the class. And even though he studied that material maybe in the 70s or 60s, whenever he got his undergraduate degree, the fact that he was doing it again now made him that much stronger. I don't think I really knew calculus very, very well until I started teaching it and I already had a graduate degree. I mean, I really learned it better just by doing basic math. So I think the most important math that you can do is the math that you want to do, the math that you actually do, even if it's basic math because it's going to help you. Even the most basic math will help you. Even if you just do basic calculus and basic algebra and go over your notes, it's going to help you. It's going to make you stronger. 
even when you think you already know it, it's going to make you stronger. I didn't really understand, you know, a lot of the calculus theorems until I got up on the board and had to explain Rawls theorem or the mean value theorem to the students in a class and say, hey, why does the mean value theorem fail? You know, what does it mean graphically? Things like that are very, very hard for students to learn in a classroom. It's very hard. So if you're in a calculus class and you don't know these things, it's okay, right? It's hard because there's time involved. I certainly didn't know these things when I was a student. No, I just did enough to get the grade and move on because the grade, it goes on your transcript, right? It stays with you forever. And let's face it, it matters, right? It matters because it's on your transcript. Some people will say, well, grades don't matter. Once you leave academia, you can get a job. That's true. That's true. Once you're in the workforce and you have a job, maybe you get a job in tech, no one's going to care that you got to see an advanced calculus. It's not really going to matter. But why not do the best you can be? Do the best you can and be the best you can be every time you take one of those classes, right? So working on basic math, I think, is great. And I think it's worth it. And so again, the best math you can do, the most important math you do in your life is the math you can do on a daily basis, whatever it is, even if it's basic math. Many of you are always asking for, you know, books. What books should I get to learn math? And there's all kinds of books. And I've talked about all kinds of strange books on this channel. I've talked about books that you can't even find. A lot of times I'll make videos and I'll post the video and I'll say, oh, I'll leave a link in the description. And then there's no link or you go to the link and like it's sold out because there was only five copies. You know, they're out of print. They're hard to find. So I've got some books here that are available. You can find them and I'll leave links in the description. And these are books. These are books that you can use to actually just do math problems. They're like problem books. And they're mostly basic math, although I do have one on analysis, which I, which I think is very good, which I wanted to recommend because I was reading it yesterday. So the first one is one you probably already have. And if you don't have it, I definitely recommend it. It's this one here. It's a calculus book. It's probably the most popular calculus book in the world. It's Calculus by Stewart. This covers all the material in Calculus 1, 2, and 3. James Stewart was a Canadian mathematician, and I say was because he passed away a while ago. But this book has great exercises. I used uh, the early transcendentals version of this book when I took calculus. I thought it was okay. I struggled. I had a hard time, just like everyone else. You know, I thought it was an okay book. Another really good one for algebra is actually one that's in Spanish. You might say, why in the world would I talk about a book in Spanish? because there's no other book like this in the world. The exercises in this book are incredible. And this book has answers to every single problem. So you can find, I have to smell it. it smells really good. You can find all kinds of insane problems that you won't find anywhere else in this book. It's Algebra Baldor. It's a book that's written entirely in Spanish. It's a bit on the pricey side. Um, it's not gonna be like, it's, it's a little bit pricey, but it's worth it. It has exercises, again, that you won't find anywhere. There is no other algebra book in the world that has these types of problems in it. This is probably, or it is, the most popular book in Spanish-speaking countries in the entire world. Uh, he also has a, an arithmetic book and a geometry book, which I don't own yet. I, I have not decided to buy those yet. Um, it's, again, it's a little bit pricey, but I'll leave the link in the description in case you want a source of challenging problems. It also has easy ones. And if you're trying to learn Spanish, it can help you. I don't think there's an English translation, but this is probably the most unique book I have here to show you because the problems are very different. And again, it's just a way to get back in it, you know, do that basic math, start doing problems every day. And that's, again, that's the best math you can do. The best math you can do is the math you actually do. Because if you try to like learn things that you don't really want to learn, you're not going to do it. An English book on algebra, this is one I used to teach for many years, College Algebra Essentials, great textbook. Um, really, really good. It's got tons of problems. Not as interesting as the Spanish book, not even close, but it's in English. And lastly, I just want to show you this one. This is just one I was reading yesterday. 
It's a great book on introductory analysis. It's not perfect, but it's certainly probably one of the easiest ones. It has hints to some of the exercises, and the hints are better than the hints in other books. It's Elementary Analysis, The Theory of Calculus by Ross. Excellent book. But the best math, again, is the math that you actually do every day. And I guess the point of this video is that th there is value in going back to doing basic math, right? There, there is value in that. I got so much better at math by doing basic math. Not only that, when I went back and revisited those topics that I forgot, because again, you forget, just like this professor who couldn't help me with the PDE, he forgot how to do PDEs, yet he was teaching real analysis. But I bet if he took the time to go back and learn PDEs, partial differential equations, he would get it much, much quicker because he's still doing math all the time because he's talking about math, he's teaching math. So when you make math, even basic math, a daily practice, when you decide to go back and learn something a little bit harder, I think you're going to find that you're going to have a much easier time learning it now than you did when you took the class even 10, 15, 20 years ago. Because there's something about learning something more than once that just makes it better. You know, it, it's like it's like working out. If you lifted weights 20 years ago and you come back to it, you have that that muscle memory sometimes. The same thing happens with mathematics. You know, if if you did math long ago and you come back to it, the more you do it, the better you get. There's some like mental memory there that just clicks and you're able to learn new math a lot easier. So again, the best math you can do is the math that you'll actually do, even if it's basic. Do you have any tips or advice for people watching this video? If you do, leave a comment in the comment section. Also, I have an Instagram, The Real Math Sorcerer, where I post random stuff. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. And I also have courses for sale. My courses are on the Udemy website, but if you buy them, please use my links in the description of this video or check out my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. And I have courses on algebra, calculus, and a few things uh, a little more advanced. But, And I've also set the prices to be as low as possible. Um, so if you use the links, um, you should be able to get those prices. Anyways, I hope this video has been helpful to you. And hopefully you see that there is value in doing all math, even if it's easy. Good luck. Go do some math.